Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Mazzora here. It is Thursday, the 4th of January, 2024, with a quick market snapshot for you. We're going to do what we've been doing now for weeks. We're going to look at yields. We're going to look at the dollar. We're going to look at equities. I'll talk a little bit about sentiment. Wanted to start this morning, though, with a look at the written notes that we published for clients and for subscribers. I talked about the Manufacturing ISM, Institute for Supply Management Survey, for December. They score the answers. They give us a look in terms of whether or not the manufacturing space is expanding or contracting. I believe the services index comes out today as well. I haven't had a chance to look for that just yet, but I'm going to talk about that briefly here as well. So I titled the note, when, if it's going to, will the services sector follow manufacturing into recession? Manufacturing space in the U.S. has been in recession for quite some time, multiple months. And this report essentially crosses many sectors of the manufacturing sector and gets the opinion. And as you can see here, the only industry to report growth in December is primary metals. The 16 industries reporting contraction in December are, you know, virtually everything else. They have their components. I apologize for the fuzziness of this look right here. Um, the PMI itself continues to contract. By the way, a score below 50 means that the sector is contracting, that business has been going in the wrong direction. It's still contracting, but at a slower pace. New orders, if you think the economy is coming to life, you expect to pick up in new orders. That actually came down. So continuing to contract at a faster pace. Production, however, was up above 50. So that would be a positive. Employment, still contracting, but at a slower pace. Supplier deliveries, faster in terms of direction, but at a slower pace. So the rate of change uh, slowed down a bit. Inventories contracting at a faster pace. So we haven't had a restocking that may come this year and that may, you know, that will have an impact to some degree on some of these components, I suspect. Customer inventories are too low from too high. Prices, and this is telling, uh, prices actually are decreasing at a faster pace. Now that you would think would be good news if inflation and interest rates are what have had the market on edge. Signs that inflation is abating should be bullish. Well, I don't disagree based on how the market's been trading. But remember, as we've been preaching for the last couple of years, that is 100% what we should expect in an economic slowdown. Now, let's also put prices into perspective as well, because again, the market gets giddy when it sees lower prices. But ultimately, the stock market is really all about you know, cash flows and earnings, right? Our base case is that if the economy does see recession, earnings are going to sorely disappoint expectations, and that's going to be problematic for the stock market, probably during the course of 2024 now. So if you see prices go down, that means pricing power is going down. That means margins are coming down. And that is not necessarily a reason to go party. It may be with regard to what the Fed may or may not do, but certainly not with the bottom line for companies. So keep that in mind. Backlog orders contracting at a slower pace. New export orders contracting at a slower pace. Imports contracting at a slower pace. You know, and I read through the comments, not all bad. Some companies feel like the worst is come. Things are beginning to bottom. They're a little more optimistic on their outlook. Here's from our own charts. These ISM surveys, both the manufacturing and the services, are components in our PWA index. And as I point out here, the white line is manufacturing. So here's manufacturing declining, right? Here's services falling into the early 2000s recession. Here's manufacturing peaking several years before, and then here's uh, services peaking several years before the great financial crisis in 2008. And then here is manufacturing rolling over before we could spell coronavirus, right? And then here's services rolling over, and we had that brief recession, briefest of all time, only because when you throw trillions at it, you're going you're gonna to come back some. Now, here we are today with 
below the red line is below 50. So we're in recession territory for manufacturing and services continues to hold up. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean recession is a foregone conclusion. Look here, between these two recessions, we had manufacturing dip into the red, we had it dip into the red, we had services dip, but everything caught wind again and came back. We had it happen right here where both went under, uh, coming out of this recession, and then they came roaring back. That absolutely 100% could happen here. One key difference for us is that in here, our PW index was flashing red. In here, it was green. In here, it was flashing red. And when we back test in here, it was flashing red. So we're flashing red. So our base case has to be that this does ultimately move into recession. And of course, this jives with our view that last year's economic resilience stemmed from consumers still spending their pandemic savings on life experiences as opposed to stuff. Suffice to say that those savings will ultimately dwindle to a level that will draw into question the earning sustainability of the recipients of all that spending as well as the overall health of the economy. Now, when will said savings in the pockets of those who move the needle become depleted? Depends on whom you talk to. Our sources say by the end of this quarter or sometime during Q2. Something to pay very close track of and to accommodate appropriately in a smartly allocated long-term portfolio. Okay, so yields, this is a 10-year treasury yield, just like our analysis back in here said they likely would have popped big time to the upside. That has been problematic for stocks to start the year. The dollar, as the technical said it would, have popped big time. That's been problematic for stocks to begin the year. Looking at the S&P 500, we'll just keep doing the daily charts. They've been really all we need to look at of late. So uh, broke out of this rising wedge. Remember I said that's a very bearish look. We've had some rough times trying to come back off of just below the 20 day moving average, which has been an important technical level here. We'll see how that plays out. NASDAQ 100 index, the uh, ETF that tracks it, uh, very interest rate sensitive, heavy tech, broke below the 200 day moving average. Wouldn't surprise me to come back and test it. Also wouldn't surprise me if it fails that test. Remember, this was a more bearish look than was the S&P 500. The Russell 2000 trying to fill this bit of a gap right here. Uh, finding a little bit of support right at what was the 50% retracement line that it broke through here. Um, this could be a support level. We could get a bounce. It's trying to bounce today as of uh, in the moment, not successfully perhaps, but ultimately uh, you break down to there. There's very little support, if any, uh, down to that next level, which is a pretty good chunk lower and so on. Big time sell signal right here on the MACD rolling over off of overbought territory. So again, not a good look, but would not surprise me to see a bounce after the precipitous decline of the first few days of the year. Tomorrow's jobs number, who knows? Maybe that'll provide the catalyst. Today, ADP, the private payrolls report, came in about 50,000 jobs better than expected, and jobless claims were still way down there. So clearly does not comport with this notion that there's gonna be six rate cuts during the course of this year. And it does not comport actually with our recession thesis either, but that's not necessarily all going to happen right here. Remember, there is some liquidity out there in the economy that presumably is getting spent. And when that's spent, and we're seeing the other indicators, you know, rising delinquency rates, that sort of thing, that you know, recession is a not small risk here still. But as we get data that conflicts with that and rates pop to the upside, well, then you have problems in the stock market. Now, I wanna be very, very clear, as some who I know who are in the bear camp believe that this is the beginning of what ultimately we need to get that last leg of the bear market over with. It's not the trading character that we're looking for. We're not looking for the market to sell off on good economic news and higher interest rates. Ultimately, although we expect that as it happens, the ultimate sell-off comes actually with falling yields and falling corporate profits. Remember what I said about declining inflation because that'll happen during recession and what that does to corporate margins. That's ultimately how this thing shakes out to the downside if there is that last leg to come. It's not gonna be because the economy is good and rates are rising. 
until I should say that the Fed reacts to that, starts raising interest rates again, that will be called the straw that breaks the camel's back. But let me just touch on that as well. The, Milton Friedman said that you know, monetary policy comes with long and variable lags. And it was a very aggressive tightening campaign. But, you know, it came off of, you know, $5 trillion given to individuals and small businesses. That is going to make that lag longer. Is that money works its way through the economy and that's showing up in the services sector. And we are a services driven economy. Well, then that will elongate the expansion. If indeed there is the comeuppance or the come down off of all that stimulus, well, then that's where you get your recession and that's where you get your rest of the bear market. If we see inflation come back, if we see some things begin to bottom and some of the inflation indicators have been bottoming, then you actually get this kind of ugly 2022 setup where inflation is stubborn, the Fed has to start being hawkish again, stocks fall a good piece. Now, if they get more hawkish here, given where we are with the pandemic savings being depleted and so forth, that may be the straw that ultimately breaks the camel's back and you could see the economy begin to swiftly abate. And again, everything I'm talking about is simply within the realm of possibility. Obviously, our models and our indicators are suggesting that we need to be very wary of the downside risk right here. As I wrote extensively in our year-end letter, once we get through whatever is left in the current cycle, we are bullish in a not small way several key sectors and areas of the world uh, so we are not you know doom and gloom by any stretch of the imagination on a longer term basis just right now it looks like there's more to play out and we need to be somewhat cautious we want to make money in an up market but we want to be hedged so that we can mitigate you know a good portion of those declines if we get a swift sell off in that next leg down if indeed we have that so folks um you know, I was going to talk about sentiment. It's still way up there to levels that are very precarious for markets. I've charted that for you. Maybe we'll do that next time. And I'll leave it there. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.